I'm Chris Augustine and I'm here today with you to review the small Jackson Nirvana from a small female perspective. My top three features of this boat is the edge to edge transition, its secondary stability, and the ability of it just to skip through holes and when you land a booth it just skips right out on you. My least favorite things of this is one is just an aesthetics thing but when you look down the bow of the boat it just looks big there's a couple things about the outfitting that i think could be improved and when i first got into this boat when i would surf it would lock into an edge and it took me a little bit to figure out how to unlock that but that's really not a negative of the boat it was a negative of the boater so I really only have two critiques of the boat. To give you an idea of where I'm at in the process of reviewing this, I've taken this on section four of the Chatuga, Tallulah, Russell Fork, Pigeon Drives, and recently I've taken it out on the green a couple times. So I think I've been in this boat maybe 10 times. Let's get into those top three. Where I really started to fall in love with this boat was when I took it out on the Rocky Broad and I learned the magic in this boat, I believe, comes from the edge to edge transition. You can just take one flow, drop the other edge, and it just skips out from that. And so rivers like the Rocky Broad, it just absolutely excelled on. So edge to edge transition is hands down my favorite thing of this boat. Secondary stability kind of goes with that because you can really drop an edge lean pretty far and then throw your weight all the way the other way and it's got you. The secondary stability on it definitely is confidence inspiring where I do want to take it out on bigger water, um, maybe some steeper stuff here in the southeast. We just haven't had the rain so I'm kind of waiting for that. The third thing I really like about this boat is how it just doesn't really think a hole is a hole. It just goes right through it it skips it doesn't want to sink it doesn't want to keep you in there and from a small person that doesn't weigh that much that's huge to not be intimidated by a hole and know that you're actually gonna have fun skipping out of that hole so some of the things that i didn't necessarily care for is it's dumb honestly it just looks big if you look down from the top of the boat at the bow it just looks big and so before I ever got into it, I was kind of like, oh man, is this going to be too big of a boat for me? But it's not. Like it really does feel like a true small creek boat. And so it's really not a negative that comes down to performance. It's just an aesthetics thing. The outfitting, the things that I think could be improved on it for me is because I have to bring my back band up so far because of my short legs and typically most boats I bring my seat forward, it doesn't allow for much movement of the hips. Like it's Velcro and there's just not much space on the side to be able to move that forward or back. So I wish that there was a little bit more real estate on that hip so that I could have a little more play on it. But again, it's minor, like my hips are locked in. This boat is showing that it's eight foot and six inches in length. It's got a 80 gallons and it weighs 43 pounds. If you want to learn any more, just go check out the Jackson kayak website. What's the weight and how does this carry? I think Jackson excels and tries really hard to keep the weight of their boats down. And you can feel that in this boat compared to say picking up a dagger. We all know dagger boats way more because of their pretty plush outfitting. Jackson's is definitely going to be lighter and it's balanced on my shoulder. So when I carry it, you know, while I never want to carry a boat very far, I do feel like it is balanced on my shoulder. Rolling is super easy in this boat. I don't think you're going to have an issue rolling this at all. Outfitting, so I kind of talked about the negatives that I see in the outfitting. No, I want to talk about the positives because there are plenty of positives. I do like the string system. It's just easy to get in and out of. 
Uh, I really appreciate the higher knee position in this boat. It's fairly aggressive. It's not crazy aggressive, but to me it's kind of the sweet spot. So I don't like low knees in a kayak because I just don't feel like I have the control with my lower half that I really want. And I'm really grateful that Jackson nailed the knee position on this. To ferry the boat, so once I'm in an eddy and ferrying the boat, uh, a test that I like to do is how quickly can I get it from zero to 60 is what I say. So I'm in an eddy and I have no speed and I'm getting that bow into the current and going where I need to go. And at first I had to learn with such a high rocker profile that I needed to get my nose out there a little bit further than what I was used to, to really get that boat to go where I wanted it to go. Getting in and out of eddies is really easy for this boat. It's almost as fun as my small antics. And that's saying a lot considering this is a much larger boat than that. You can just drop an edge and you're there. And then getting out, you know, it doesn't feel sluggish getting out of the eddy. And that's something that's really important for me. And when I test boats out, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm really pleased with that. Surfing this boat, once I figured out how to unlock the edge, if I did lock in an edge, it's super fun. I mean, it's a creek boat, so, you know, it's not your little play boat or your half slice or full slice, but it's a lot of fun for a creek boat to surf. I don't really have any issues moving that bow around and front surfing and even spinning on a wave is actually pretty easy in this boat. So holes, how does it handle? I've already talked about this. It really skips through holes. Uh, I don't really fear holes. I mean, granted, I don't really want to take it into the biggest hole I've ever seen in my life, but I do think that it does extremely well in a hole. Boofing. Here in the Southeast, man, that is one of my most favorite things to do in a kayak. And this thing is shocking how easy that I can crank out a big boof. Again, I'm gonna kind of compare it to the antics because that's what I primarily creak in. And this thing is almost as easy to boof as my antics. Granted, that's not a fair comparison because in the antics as a half slice, I can kind of lean back and load up that stern and really crank out a big booth. I obviously can't do that in a full creek boat, but I do feel like I can get a monster stroke in and just launch that boat. And I mean, there's not a whole lot more fun to be had than boofing a kayak out here in the Southeast. Let's talk about in white water. How does this boat handle? Uh, I really enjoy it. I don't feel like the boat drives me at all. I feel like I can drive the boat once I'm in the rapid. You know, if I want to go to the left, I'm going to the left. Look where you want to go. And then if I decide that I need to change my angle, I don't have an issue changing the angle. It's pretty nimble. It's fairly fast. If we're going to talk about speed, you know, um, in a rapid, I feel like it's fairly sporty and I do like sporty boats. So I'm going to probably rank the speed of it at an eight out of 10. If a 10 is a long boat, maybe even an eight and a half. And then in flat water, I'm probably going to rank it around the eight, eight and a half as well. It doesn't feel slow, but it's definitely not going to be, you know, long boat speed. Final thoughts of this kayak. I, you know, when I first got into it, I'm going to be honest, I was not, you know, thinking that this was the greatest boat that has ever been created. But with saying that and getting into the boat more than just a handful of times, I'm really, really falling in love with this kayak. The edge edge transition on it is amazing. The stability is great. I'm really excited to run it on some bigger things. 
you know, if I can imagine taking it out west on bigger water, I think it would excel out on big water as well. But maybe some of you out west that have this kayak can chime in on that and let me know, you know, do you have the same thoughts as I do out on bigger water? But if you are interested in this kayak, I really recommend that you look up where your local dealer is, get in touch with them, see about a demo, and take it out for a spin and you decide what you do and don't like about it and if it's the boat for you. Until next time.